Welcome back. Uh, last time we had laid the fabric on the other side and I just, you know, started tacking it down and it was going to be the same procedure we did on the other side. So one thing I didn't mention, uh, I like to designate my left and my right top and bottoms of what I'm doing. And I always like to put the fabric on the bottom first and then put the top on second. That way you've got the even solid run of fabric going around the top. Even though this edge, you you are, you are iron this thing down so smooth that, you know, really by the time you put the primer in, or, or you put the reinforcement tape, your primer, you sand the primer, you put your paint on, a lot of times you really have to look for it because there's been times that, you know, I, I'd pick up a, something and, you know, be a little bit confused on top and bottom and start looking for this. And I really have to look for this little seam. And all, all this seam is going to be is under your reinforcement tape. And it's just going to be a little tiny ridge. But with that said, I, I still like to do the bottom first and then do the top. That way, this, this little edge is going to be on the bottom. So if this was a, a real airplane part, we were going to use it, this would be the top. It'd be the smooth fabric all the way around. Uh, when I got that, you know, glued down, then I came back and I took an iron and I just fanned those tips down a little bit and, and they'll be done once more before you put the reinforcement tape. But going around the end of this, when this was glued, sometimes you'll, you'll look and it might be a little bit of a white place and you can touch it and the fabric's moving, it'd be a little hollow place. You can keep adding thin glue and thin glue. Once you, like I mentioned before, once you get glue on it, it's not wanting to soak through and activate anymore. At that point, I'll take the, uh, hand me that little iron there. At that point, if I do see a little hollow place, you could take an iron and set it about 275. And in that hollow place, you can take it and just kind of roll it up and that'll activate and stick it down. Also, if it's a little hollow place, this iron's not hot, but if, it, if there was to be a little hollow spot there, not only are you sticking it down, uh, you're, you're, you're heating it and shrinking it a little bit, and you're just tightening all of that last little bit out if you had a little hollow place. And I'm not sure, like right here, when I was showing you that there is a way that if you want to go down through it and cut a little slit to make it go around a compound term, everywhere there's a little slit, if you take the iron at about 275 and you work that little seam down, that seam will just might as well just go away. You, you might see it, but you can't feel it. So that, at that point, we're not doing the final ironing at this point, but you're just getting that last little bit ironed over. All right. I mentioned in the very first video, the type of irons I like to use is uh, just basically your cheap, you know, Walmart, not your high dollar, uh, real, real expensive, a lot of wattage. Because when you get up above about four and a quarter or higher, you can you can melt it and I probably I probably I may do it on this one or we may do one part I, I'll burn a little hole and then I'll show how you know you you've done you done got 25 hours tied up in a wing and and you did something and you burned a hole and we ain't gonna recover the wing I'll show you how maybe to patch it or or do something in this stage because this is the very easiest stage uh, at some point we'll do an actual rip in the paint uh, Every company has a way that they like to repair and AirTech has their way, which is similar to most of them. And I can show you ways that, you know, I've, I've had customers come in and, and had flipped an airplane or cub and this part of the rudder is mangled. I've come in and repaired, never uncover it from here. And I'll show you how to blend the glue in and the paint and the fabric and how to tape off your paint lines and stuff to where you vir virtually can't see where it starts or stops. But just a typical old, just a digital with a light, you know, red dot laser. Your first pass, you set your iron at, at about, about 250. And, and it's going to be really hard to, to get an exact number. Uh, here's your settings on your, you're going to make three passes when you're shrinking. 250, 300, and 375. And these are only guesses. You know, you'll be anywhere from, 225, 230 to take say 270. It's not going to hold its own. And you'll sit here and you'll have it right at 250 and you'll set it down. You may look back at maybe 220 or you may set it down and it's at 300 and it's, and it's kind of built up and it's trying to cool down. 
a lot of times you'll get to where you'll see how the fabric acts once you did did enough of it but on this final one you got to be kind of careful uh they say you got to set it 375 380 somewhere in there anywhere 350 360 is going to do fine on your final shrink but let's say you pick the iron up and i like to make it a habit if the iron's been sitting over there for a couple minutes and now i'm fixing to go back especially on this setting you just it's just a quick shot with these you know they used to sell the little cover right with a coil and that took so slow and stuff this is just a pretty fast read and you shoot it and it's at 425 and you know it's running about right there a lot of times I just, you know, instead of waiting on it or trying to turn it down, you just, you just kind of rub it on the pants leg. You know, you can just lightly feel the warmth there, but you've took some of the heat out of the iron real quick and you've brought it right back down to where you're at. And I'll show you a little later that, you know, when you have it set right here, as soon as you start this iron and you're pulling heat from that iron. And so you have to kind of, that's where a lot of times you may have to have your setting a little bit higher than this because you're constantly moving. And that's when you set it down and it kind of goes overboard with you. It's kind of, get it kind of acclimated back to where, you, where you're starting. With this first pass, uh, I went next door and got the iron from the shop and I haven't used this one. It's got a few marks and I'm not sure what all they mean, but I'm gonna say, I'm gonna start her in there about 260, 275. All right, what you gonna do, what you gonna do is when you start, you know, naturally you can start right here across the center and it's kind of pulling, pulling it. And, you, and a lot of times you think, well, I've done, there's no more wrinkles. I've done got that, that looks good. You want that iron to go ahead and go across all that open weave. And our, and our book shows to be running about four to eight inches a second. And you'll just kind of get used to kind of a good speed, you know, to run. Uh, sometimes I may go over several places of it to get it kind of started pulling, but on, on like this part, just, just start in an area and run your tip up through there. And keep in mind the way I'm doing this tip, that's a small tip covering that area, but I got a big wide part of the iron that's really shrinking here. So you may kick the heel of the iron around the next pass. Just kind of run over it all and really make sure you get in the corners because a lot of times it's nothing worse than thinking you've got everything tight and you're in the paint booth and you're fixing to put on fabric primer and you notice right here in the corner that you've got a little tiny spot that's got a little wrinkle or something. So just take note of the little areas like that, even though you've tightened everything, especially when you get to the final, run the tip of that iron up in that corner and make sure you get all of those out. And like I said, this first pass is just your 250 degree pass. You're, you're basically on this pass, this is the pass that you're really not trying to get every little corner out, but you're getting that first pass and get it tightened getting the getting a set of the fabric in uh, sometimes if you don't watch you run over a piece of metal that you've got glue base on and it may stick to it so you know a lot of times I kind of be careful not to get get a real hot iron up on the up on that edge and like I said I'm just kind of hurrying along with this first pass uh, when you get to the next higher settings I can remember when I first started, uh, Jesse, she would tell me that, and I've noticed in the past, I don't know there's nothing really scientific about it, but she'd always say when you start, when you start ironing, you see that little bit of steam coming off, that means you're doing good. I mean, it's, you know that you're getting hot enough, you're pulling some steam out of it, and you're also setting that fabric. Um, I could, <clears throat> excuse me, I could shrink everything here. I could shrink everything here. And everything is the same tightness, but this piece right here has not been, I call it setting the fabric. It, it hasn't had heat to it, even though it, you know, which is not tight yet, but even though you may have shrunk it here and shrunk it here, so all the tightness is the same, you want to see that iron go across every part of it at some point. And, and, it, and it just sets that weave and it, and it makes it to where the fabric primer takes to it real well. And you know, you're, you're taking all the little edges out. You know, at this setting right now, I could just see a little puff of steam come up right then, so. And, you know, you're, you're, if you're a beginner at some point, you're probably gonna get a little lax and you may possibly, possibly burn a hole. You won't, you won't in this pass or the second one. Usually what will happen is the iron will have a mind of its own and it'll do something stupid while it's sitting there and you're picking up something and you pick the iron up and you forget to, you know, I, I usually don't pick the 
the thermometer up every time. You know, a lot of times if I've got an iron set where I know about where the settings are, and I set the iron down and I'm doing the final, and I do something over here and I walk back, I just naturally grab it, give it one of them little passes, and that just, that, that noise, you know, I mean, I have literally had some of them old irons, especially them old black handle ones that got a million watts or something. They're 100 years old. I picked them up before and, and do this, and that thing would grab, and it just looked like a back of a shirt. I mean, it would take, it would literally take out a hole that big. So I usually just, you know, make that pass if it's a good iron you're used to, and take that little edge of heat off of it. This point will bring the temperature on up to the next, next pass, and that'll be around the 300 degree mark. I'm showing about 316 then, and it's gonna probably try to cool back down. So if it's, if it's really cold in your shop, and all this is really cold, you know, it's just going that four to eight out, eight inches per second. You know, you may vary that a little. You just don't want to get too slow. Uh, anytime, which we don't have much going on here as far as on metal, but like coming up on a wing tip or a leading edge or something, and you've got a little wrinkle that's sitting up on a piece of metal that has glue on it. You've got to slow down because your iron then at that point is putting heat into that piece of aluminum under it and stuff. So you have to come on down, you know, slow on down to about half that speed. But if you've got a little wrinkle on an area that has glue and you're just, let's just say, I can see a little tiny wrinkle right here. Now I've still got it set at 300, but if you're going to work that on top of that glue, our manual will tell you to come back down to this temperature to not scorch the glue because when you get up in these yeah you're you're shrinking it but you could scorch the glue and then you start getting you know just old dark brown stuff eventually building up on your iron a lot of times about every time i get done using it or right before i use it the next time while it's cool uh, you you naturally think while it's hot i'll get some reducible and i'm cleaning the iron it'll just sit there and evaporate as much as you're hitting it on a cold iron get a little of the glue reducer and get that get that iron clean again because once it gets hot and you go around a piece of tape and it's got some glue and you iron that you get a little glue and it sits there and keeps getting darker and darker and darker uh, at some point you're going to come across something you're going to put an old dark piece of glue on on your fabric so this is that second pass you know and i could hear the fabric kind of pop as it slid across one of them one of them ribs I can really see the steam coming up against that dark background. And the hotter your iron, you want to start really taking mine to the speed because you've done got the fabric tight. And you're pretty well touching most of the fabric. And at this pass is where you'll start seeing those little corners that has a little wrinkle. Kind of run that tip up in them. Work it around. All right, now I see a little problem here. I'm gonna, I don't know if I can fix it or not, but I'll show you what'll happen sometime. Kelly, bring the camera over here close. I got a little too fast at some point gluing the fabric on while it was loose, and you can see it glued around the post. So see, it's level here coming up, but see how it's glued down? It's got that little dent in it. Sometimes you can take an iron and you can stand right out here and you can kind of shrink it, not get it too hot and kind of heat it up. And, and the book says that you can, if you've got something you want to kind of take back loose, you can take the iron and release it back. Or you can just get pure reducer 4000 and take your finger and just sit there and rub a little bit and clean it and rub it. Rub it down to the fabric and then it will, it'll kind of release at that point and cut that corner back off. That took a little out, but there's a little left there. You can take the reinforcement tape and come across that and bridge that spot. I don't really like to have bridged spots in the reinforcement tape. So, you know, if I was, if this was a certified plane and I was trying to, you know, take about twice as long as I'm doing in this video, I'd come in here and on this one, since I hit it with that iron and it didn't work, I'd take a little reducer, just keep kind of wetting that till it feels like it's going to come back loose and then take that iron and, and then it'll usually scrape that edge across the iron. I think 
that was my second pass running on both sides. Mm -hmm. All right, now we're going to go to the 375. And see, while I'm sitting here, this thing has jumped about 350, son. You know, that pass right there might have actually been enough, but I'm going to set it right at that 350 or so mark, and we're going to make one more just to, so that's way the, before I bought the company, and all, the way I was always taught, that last pass is going to be, and, and there is a, I don't know offhand what percentage the Sinkinite fabric shrinks as far as percentages. You know, you, you could have this really hanging deep, and you could go around and shrink it all and it'd be just about as tight as this. Or if you had it pulled really tight when you glued it, it's gonna be about the same tightness. But I have, in my early years, got a little over overdoing it on my last pass. And I would notice, I'm like, well, it don't feel like it was as tight as it was last pass. So I'd call Kenny and he said, what actually happened was, is I probably went over the temp on it and then I started actually breaking down some of the fibers so it was actually getting it was it was actually slightly loosening a little bit so you know you, you'll you'll stop and recover one stab because of that you won't do no more after that after you have to redo one so you know you, you just kind of get used to your own iron you make a few passes and while you're while you're actually covering the you know and I'm not going in every little corner here I'm just trying to show you know, you check it and give it a check. See, I'm running right at 360 right there. So that's that's about right. But you know, if it sets down like it did a while ago, I bet it's gonna go up to about 400. That same old trick, kind of temper that a little bit on your pants level. And your last side over here. And while you're doing, you know, you may see a little, I see a slight little loose bubble there. You know, that's a time where if you, even if you don't have your little iron, and lay that up there, slowly work it up around, around the corner. Looks like a welded place maybe or something there. It's not, that's not glue. But there'll be a time when after you put the tapes on, what I call finalizing everything right before you go to fabric wash, that you're gonna go over every little tape, every little nook, uh, every little, which if this was a real piece, it would have two hinges, but. That's when you're gonna go in and really fine line all those little places and check in your corners and everything with the little iron. And we'll go over shrinking a wing. And uh, one thing I didn't mention, these this is a this actually come off of a cub crafter, I think, which was a this is one of the early ones, a typical Univer type part. And it's robust enough that you don't, you know, don't have any problem. But I always like to go ahead and put all my, now this gets into the building side, but I like to put all my ailerons on my plane or my rudders and everything. And if this was your vertical, I like that. I want to be able to put a number two, pit, whatever width that is, I want it to be the same width all the way. And if you put it on there with before fabrics on it, you've got some problem. I try to fix it right then. The world's worst is walking up to a wing, a beautiful airplane, walk up to the aileron, and it's almost touching on a tip and got a big gap. I have seen times on some of the early chiefs and stuff where the, the, the material be a little bit weak right here that everything looked good and you're shrinking this and all of a sudden you shrunk it enough that you actually pull a little bow. If it's an experimental or a lot of time on a piper wing, I may add an extra U channel somewhere to try to brace all I can. But to keep that from happening, if you've got an area like this that you're afraid that it may pull it a little bit much, once you put your first tightening on, and maybe about halfway through this one, this area right in here, I might actually just ease off from just doing that hard if, it, if you think it's gonna pull. This is made out of metal, this one probably wouldn't, but on an aluminum wing, especially on a Piper wing or a Cetabria wing. Cetabrias, I have a wood block usually to help reinforce that, but that's the world's worst to run on the back end of a wing or something where your aileron mates that the fabric will pull and it just looks terrible. I mean, it's airworthy, it, it, it's fine, but it just really looks bad. So, And that happens during your covering and during your shrinking process. So a lot of times if I see a spot that I know is gonna do that, I'll just try to, I'll just try to be real gingerly with it and, and maybe, you know, as long as it's tight, 
the fabric primer is going to set in. It's going to get the same, you know, it's going to be fine. Just that one area, you don't want to pull it too hard. All right, this one's considered shrunk. Next, we'll, next video, we will look at, I guess we'll look at putting the reinforcements tapes and stuff on.